Alternative Radio. On this episode, Missy and I are talking about the love languages. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. podcast where Missy and I talk about everyday practical tips that can help us to find our inner peace and to live a life of happiness regardless of what's going on with our lives. Uh, so Missy, how you doing? I know it's uh, February when we're doing this and um, it, it's been a bit since we've done this. Um, I know, I feel like it's been forever. Whole, it's I been know. it's been since last year really so <laughs> technically yes <laughs> it, it it was last year um just thankfully last year just means a few weeks ago but yeah. uh, um yes it, it 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 has been since last year and we're in a whole new year and uh having high hopes for this year versus the last couple yeah. um but then again i had those high hopes for last year too but anyway <laughs> So how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, no complaints. Uh, life has been treating us really well, and we've been very active this year. So, um, you know, family events and birthday parties and, you know, so life really just hasn't stopped. It's just been very um, rewarding. Yeah. How about yourself? Yeah. Same. Been really busy and uh, enjoying the grandkids as always. But um, yeah, yeah there, there's just work seems to be um just exploding and, and opportunities and all of that and that's really why unfortunately we haven't gotten together because uh, I know right yeah it's just been so busy that it, it just hasn't happened so um hopefully we're back on track and yeah uh, you know can keep sharing what we share but yeah. this is what we talk about too, you know, the busyness of life and how you keep your mm -hmm. inner peace and, you know, everyday life. So, you know, that that's what I've been trying to work on in, in the midst of all the busyness is just maintaining my one day at a time, live in the moment, yeah. enjoy the moment. Um, so it, mu yeah. it must be oh. really good that we have this, you know, that we have this podcast because um, it's funny, one of the, the, um, classes that I use a workbook and I, I work out of every day uh, for myself says uh, to, to have peace, you must teach it to learn it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's exactly what we're doing here is, and, you know, and in this case, we're going to be hopefully teaching you some things will keep you peaceful in your relationships, whether it's yes. children or family or loved ones, significant others, you know, that kind of thing. So it's going to be, I think, pretty helpful. Yes. No, I'm excited because uh, since we are recording this in February and a few days after Valentine's Day, unfortunately, um, yeah. yes, thinking that love languages and the relationships would be a apropos topic to uh, February. Yes. Yes. So, Chris, do you know your love languages? I don't know. Are you asking me or are you asking my wife? <laughs> <laughs> so those I'm could be two you. very different um <laughs> very different responses yeah very different <laughs> responses um yeah i mean for me I, i'm very much a uh introverted type person and you know sometimes that surprises people given what i do you know for a living but i, I really am more introverted which really talks more about what's going on on a person's inside. So my mm -hmm. thoughts and my feelings and my emotions are more interior than, you know, would be expressed. So I think when it comes to relationships, romantic or otherwise, I'm more of the quiet one that feels deeply, but you may not know that. 
unfortunately. So the the five love languages in my, you know, um, so Dr. Gary Chapman wrote a book, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's physical touch, hugs, kisses, love, um, words of affirmation. I love you. I appreciate you. You're so kind. You know, uh, you look beautiful. We always like those. I mean, us <laughs> words of affirmation people do. Um, acts of service, you know, taking out the trash, doing the dishes, cooking, things like that. Um, gifts, which could be anything extravagant, like a trip to anything small, like a speaker bar. And mm -hmm. um, quality time is, is the final one, which is obviously just spending time with one another and right. um, not on your phone or, you know, you know, sometimes it, some of the quality time people that I know just want to be in the same room with you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, but I, you're on your phone and I'm, I'm on my phone and this isn't spending time with me, to me, you know, but they might right. have different opinions. So right. anyway, so would you say of those five, what would you say, like what, what serves you the most? Because we usually give love the way we like to receive it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would say that I tend to give it more as in number four with, with the gifts, um, just spontaneous stuff nice. here and there. Yeah. Um, but I also tend to five and going back to the introversion. Yeah. Skip the phones. You know, that's if you're sitting yeah, yeah, in a room yeah. with somebody <laughs> on a phone, they're not there with you, but yeah. I'm very comfortable though, as, as that introvert to say that if we're in a room together without even saying a word, I'm still feeling that togetherness yeah. and that still works. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, where others will say, well, no, you need active dialogue. And, and yeah. at least for me as an introvert, uh, the, the mere presence of, of the other is fine with me. And, yeah. and it doesn't need to be, um, you know, the emotions don't need to be shared verbally. Right. Um, now, again, we're not both in the room on our phones. That That's, I, I'm not counting that. Um, so that, that would be more me. Um, but but could you be preoccupied with other old. things? So let's say she's reading a book and you're watching football. Like, are you, is that yeah. still like serve for you? Okay. That works for me. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, though, both on phones doesn't, and I don't know why I, I'd have to examine <laughs> that, that. That for some reason is like, you, you're, you're not present, but yes, I mean, you could be reading a book or you know, yeah. whatever. And, um, you know, the fact that people are choosing to be in that same space, mm -hmm. um, that that's where I think the relationship comes in, you know, because yeah. you can choose to be elsewhere, yeah. but you're going to choose, uh, you know, to join in this space. Now. So, so I'm personally, how about you? Uh, yeah, I'm, um, words of affirmation and acts of service. So like, I love to, you know, like, oh, let me get your dinner for you. Oh, I cooked for you, you know, right. And, and I'm really not as strong in that one as I am for words of affirmation. So like telling the kids that I'm proud of them or, you know, just expressing my love in different ways for my uh, significant other. But I didn't know this until my marriage had failed uh, that my ex was physical touch and I thought I was doing a good job, you know, but I apparently, you know, I'm not a physical person, but he was very physical, but I didn't realize that the people, the way they receive love, no matter how it is. So like mm. to whatever makes their cup full is really like, you know, rejection in the worst form. Like, so if, if, um, and I don't, I don't want to talk about my ex or anything, you know, specifically, but, but like for me, if I walked into a room and I was like, you know, waiting for you know accolades for the way that I looked mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. and I just wait and wait and no you know like my significant other is the one that I'm looking for it from but if he doesn't say anything then it literally could be like oh my god like does he not like me is there something wrong you know like that mental dialogue starts but if he was like eh, I don't really like that outfit on you right instead of you know something which he is very good at um, sharing you know, how much he appreciates my exterior and then my, uh, you know, appreciates the way that I cook for him and the things that I do. But when, when it's not there, it sometimes feels like the worst form of rejection for mm -hmm. that person. 
And so I don't th- like, so let's say I'm not physical. If somebody said no to sex, I wouldn't be like, oh my God, I'm heartbroken and you don't love me. And I'd just be like, all right, we ain't having sex, whatever, you know, but other people, you know, in, in the, you know, Hey, can you take out the trash? And then you don't take out the trash, which is an access act of service. Yep. Then I feel like you don't love me. Right. And so I think that that's important for people to understand one, the way that they, they receive love, but mm-hmm. two, the way their partner receives it and in make an effort in trying to, you know, ensure that their cup is full, if you will. Yeah. Well, and that's where I think this is an important topic in in that sense that it helps us to better understand ourselves and our partners. Right. Um, Because I I think some of the biggest things, and, and I don't typically do marriage or couples therapy, that that's not my thing. But I have helped, you know, people out and clients out with some relationship issues. And, you know, one of the things that I think is one of the um, biggest issue that evolves would be the expectations Yeah. that, you know, and especially in the example you were giving, you know, is, is that one party has an expectation that another mm-hmm. party is going to do something. So when they don't, yeah, that's, you know, a, a negation of, you know, whatever. But how aware is the other person of that expectation? Right. And that, that's where you know, I notice <laughs> exactly, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes when I'm dealing, you know, with, with some couples on this, on this, you know, very basic piece that, you know, I, I've had them say like, well, this is the first time I've heard you say that's yeah. something you would, you know, want, like, don't yeah. like whatever. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that really shows that, you know, I, I think it's, it's very important that we um, communicate expectations and and to know what is my love language what is yours how do we express that you know are we comfortable w- with each other's uh love languages and you know what, what are we going to do to support each other right w- without the other guessing sorry there's a bug right in front of me <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so, but they so... <laughs> I no, I'm, I was going to go somewhere, but I won't. <laughs> want some love, want some physical love for me. <laughs> cheesy, cheesy. Um, yeah, but that's, you know, that's, I think that that's important because like I said, you know, that was part of the reason that I had a failed marriage, which, and I don't say that failed because I'm, I'm very, I feel very good about where I'm at in my life and I still mm-hmm. have a very good relationship with my ex. Um, however, you know, that was not something that I understood. Like you said, there's there, I didn't know that expectation was there. And, you know, I, obviously he didn't know that expectation was there for me either. Um, so those are like, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of what a love language was is what I'm getting at, you know? And, um, now I'm in a relationship where I swear to God, he has all of the love languages. Like this just, <laughs> just gives it all. And, and I'm the same way. Like I just love to, you know, uh, pamper and love and take care of. And, you know, some people might call it mothering, but I don't, <laughs> so I just, you know, but I do it to my kids as well as I do it to him because mm-hmm. I want him to know that, you know, I appreciate him and, and to, you know, it's, it's just in my nature to be, the space that people can just relax and have fun and, and be in enjoyment, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and I would just really encourage people to, to learn these love languages and, you know, to have these conversations. Yeah. Um, because unfortunately in many relationships, when things start to go wrong in the relationship, one of the first things that stops is communication. Right. And it's the communication that is needed well, all throughout, but definitely as things are um, maybe getting tense or starting to fall apart, you need that communication even more. But yet we tend to pull away at that point and stop communication. And then it's only going to get worse because, again, you're going to have these expectations that are never verbalized um, and as such are never going to be met. And, And then that just helps the other to say, well, see, I was right all along. Um, yeah. you know, 
when in reality, maybe you're not, you know, if the other knew, <laughs> it could be a whole different story. So, and I, I also want to point out that I don't know about men, I don't know about anybody else on this planet, I can only <laughs> assume, but we have a tendency to make things up, right? You know, mm -hmm. like, who knows, does somebody not love you just because they didn't open your car door? No, that's not necessarily the case, right? You know, and um, sometimes that inner dialogue that you have is your, is your worst enemy, right? And um, it was kind of funny because um, <laughs> I was on the phone with my biological father this morning and he said something to the effect of, you know, he was talking to my stepmom and, and um, you know, he said, she said something and it was like negative and, and he was like, I didn't want to tell her it was all, all in her head. And I was like, yeah, that's a bad idea on any front. You don't do that to women. You just don't, you just don't <laughs> like, but that's the truth. The truth is that nine times out of 10, we can't remain neutral about any experience that we're having. And, and the point of being an observer of that, just being an observer of the things that you're thinking can really help shift you from, mm -hmm. from uh, what did somebody say? Love-based thinking, the fear-based thing from fear-based thinking. Right. And yep. um, like you, you say healthy and unhealthy, right. It's the same thing. It's that there's, it's, it's polarity. And we always want to shift, you know, and I'm a firm believer in, and you can love somebody every day for the rest of your life, even if you're not with them, you know, or mm -hmm. you can, you can have that kind of relationship that still has growth without being with a person, you know? And so whether mm -hmm. that's my parents, my sisters, you know, my siblings, my best friends, you know, around the world, or who's in my immediate household every single day. You know, I always want to have that growth mentality. And so I've really come a long way from, from finding neutrality in the things and the way other people behave in making up things about how, how it, um, how I take it personally, really, and, mm -hmm. and how I react to it because res your response is really your responsibility. That's the only thing that you, you can't control yep. other people but your responsibility nope. is how you respond to it. Yep. And we can control our thoughts. And, and I totally agree with you. Um, th there is a famous person, Dr. Judith Beck, and uh, she was giving a conference. And, and I still remember this quote of everything she said. <laughs> it was a day-long conference, one sentence. <laughs> um, but she said, just because I think it doesn't mean it's true. Oh, amen to that, for sure. Yep. And that's why I still remember that one sentence out yep. of an entire day's conference. Yeah. Because that is where we mess ourselves up, that we mm -hmm. have these thoughts, we believe these thoughts, because I, I think most of us look at these thoughts as exterior, um, you know, to us, you know, a, a thought's coming in because of something factual. Mm -hmm. But in reality our thoughts are generated by us. Mm -hmm. We create our thoughts. Yeah. Just like we have control over our actions, we have control over then our responsibilities, our consequences, however you want to, you know, yeah. put it. So you're right. I mean, thinking that somebody doesn't love me because of something they did or didn't do, when in reality, they didn't know they were supposed to or not supposed to do something. Right. But because we think that, of course, that's going to be true. And I, I've even heard people within arguments, you know, you know, where, where the one party is saying, no, that's not what I meant at all. And the other right. one is saying, well, no, I know it is. Right, right, right. You know, even despite <laughs> the fact the person is saying, honestly, not at all. What <laughs> that's I totally not it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, you know, but and I like we to... originally thought it, we believe that, you yeah. know, well, that it had to yeah. have been because I thought it. Well, that's the buy-in, right? That's the buy-in because thoughts go through our head all day long. And, and I like to say, oh, when you take that certain one, you know, and you believe, like you, you invite it in, you're like, oh, well, let me analyze this. Where did that come from? Why do I feel this way? And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You end up in a loop, right? And then as soon as you get worse and worse in that loop, you're literally spiraling downwards. 
right? And so that's, you've invited it in, you've decided to live with it. Now it's a belief instead of rather than just like, oh, that was an interesting thought. Wonder where that came from and let it disappear like a wisp of smoke. You know, you don't even have to say what I just said. When you see it, you just go, hmm, okay. And then that's it. I mean, and yep. this is everything from looking in the mirror to the way that you see yourself to the experiences you have, to the circumstances you're in, to the people you're around. I mean, like you can really apply that everywhere. And mm -hmm. like, as when I started to do this, I noticed um, I was judgmental, mostly to myself, but also exterior. And now I don't feel like I'm in that space anymore. It's like one, sometimes I'll have people say, you know, X, Y, Z happened with, with, you know, so-and-so and, and I'll be like, oh, well, you know, I'm sure they'll figure their way out of that, you know, and, and I believe in them, you know, and they're like, but they've done it 20 times. And I'm like, you still, you still don't, it's one, it's not my business Two, I don't want to condemn them. And because mm -hmm. guess what, that's attack. And to me, that's not possible because in my version of this world, I know that I'm one with them. I know that they have the same God spirit running through them that I have. And so I don't, I don't want to attack them because that means I'm also attacking me. And that doesn't, yep. that doesn't uh, teach anyone anything except for that that's possible. Right. And that's right. really what the foundation of this world is, is going on right now. Like that is our foundation right now. Yeah. And actually that, that probably wouldn't be a bad topic for a podcast is how to maneuver today's society, you know, and, right kind of escape it safely in a sense um, right. because we, we have lacked um, a, a sense of honest communication that leads to something productive mm -hmm. and um, I, I've always liked and, and I know it's attributed to Reagan I don't know if he was the first one to say this but the whole thing about trust but verify right. and, and I think that helps in communication you mm -hmm. know that when you're dealing with especially your partner but this could be anybody but and you have those situations where you have an expectation it wasn't met you now have the thought you don't love me this is where i think we need to trust but verify so i can trust me that maybe i have pretty good sense on other people right but let's verify this you know yeah. so what stops us from going to our partner and not accusing? And this is right. where I versus you language comes in. But mm -hmm. use the I that I feel unloved when this happened. Right. You know, so you're sharing that to give them an opportunity. I'm not judging it, just saying this is how I felt. Right. I felt unloved. To let the other person, hopefully in, in a similar way of communication, to be, to be able to say, this is what I meant. Right. You know, it's and then really funny. And hash that out. It, it, I love that you, you've brought this up because it's very, I think, very important in relationships that people add to your happiness, not be the source of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I have found in the current relationship that I'm in you know, I might get triggered by something and he'll notice right away. He's a very intuitive man and he'll notice and be like, what's wrong? And I'll be like, nothing. Just, I need, I need a few minutes. And, and he'll be mm -hmm. like, okay. And so then I'll go and I'll be like, what triggered me? Why did that trigger me? And then I'll have the opportunity to, instead of reacting, like I'll think it through. And then I have the opportunity to come back to him and say, I, I felt unloved but you didn't do it. There was nothing you hmm. did. It was the sense of the word. It was whatever it was. Right. But, right. and he'll go like, Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, you didn't do anything. You were just being you like, and that's perfect that you showed me that. And I appreciate that because now I know that there's still healing for me to do. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't ever expect him to apologize or, you know, I mean, it's always nice when we have that conversation and we're right. on the same page, and at the same time, like, I got to take that responsibility as well to look inside and see why did that trigger me? Not it's his fault. Like that's blame. That's the blame game. Nobody likes exactly. that. So I love the, 
the I versus you language there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's important because if, if we examine our conversations, many of us use the you in conversations way more mm -hmm. than we probably should be. Right. Um, so we don't want to be accusatory, especially if somebody didn't know the expectation. Yeah. You know, now I think it's different if you, you've expressed a certain you know, expectation, a certain desire, and it's always given the opposite. Um, well, that's something else to examine, you know, yeah. but if they never knew it to put blame somewhere, but yet that that's what we do. Um, you know, and I think the, these are easy things we can communicate with our loved ones. Um, but what I've had, you know, people say, you know, well, well, that that's just too difficult. I can't do that. I think that's a whole other question then. Mm -hmm. You know, why can't you have that kind of conversation with somebody who you say you're close with and, and you know, it is a loved one? You yeah. know, so where, where's that barrier, um, you know, in, in this relationship that, that you can't do that? Right. Um, you, you brought up the blame and pointing the finger. And I always like to remember mm. that when you point the finger at somebody, you have three pointing back at you, which means it's always more you than it is them. And, um, and yeah, I would totally be like, whoever that person was like, uh, <laughs> if you can't have an open honesty in your relationship and communicate, what else is there? You know, yeah. you know what else is there to, you know, that's, that's, my, my significant other is my best friend. I got to tell him everything, good, bad, wrong, and different. It doesn't matter because I, mm -hmm. I love him and I want to share who I am with him. And if I have to hide who I'm being, you know, then, then yep. that's probably not the right person for me. Yeah. Okay. You know, and I mean, my, my role as a counselor or a coach, you know, isn't really to tell you who you, you know, need to be with or not be with, but I have made some suggestions that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's another way to look at this. Yeah, yeah, um, that's it. yeah so, it's, it's always on. great when you need, when you want somebody, but don't need them. That's yeah. one of my favorite sayings is that, you know, like, that's why, that's why in my relationship, he adds to the happiness mm -hmm. that I have, the joy that I have, the fun that I have. I mean, he adds to everything that, that I get to do. And he's yep. that safe space on a day that I'm falling apart, you know? Um, and that's nice. That's really nice mm -hmm. to have, you know, a physical body to have that and love him. But if he wasn't, I could do it by myself. I know that, yep. you know what I mean? Because I have the love inside of me to be able to, to bring out and, share with others no matter what mm -hmm. yeah and, and i think that is a, a key that people need to remember is you know we don't have to be in a relationship no. you know we can desire to be in one we can want to be in one that's all wonderful choose whomever it is you want to be in one with but you're right that the difference of well i have to you yeah. know and and if i lose this person what am i going to do um yeah that that's a, a dependence and a whole other podcast talk yeah i was gonna say <laughs> um, i was like that sounds like a codependency podcast <laughs> yep exactly a whole other conversation yeah, yeah. um you know where yeah if, if your partner uplifts you and supports you and is there for you that's what it's all about yeah in my is. mind at least i mean yeah. you know others can comment differently and that's fine but but it should no, be I totally need. agree. And, you know, I want to make sure I mention that if you guys do want to find out what each other's love languages are, you can do this for your kids. You can do this for your significant other. You can do it for yourself. Uh, it's um, Gary Chapman's website is fivelovelanguages.com. And it gives you the opportunity to buy the book. He's got a book. He's got um, the test that you can find out what your love language is and extremely valuable in any relationship, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And uh, we'll have a link to that, uh, you know, in, in the show notes for people to click there because it, it really is, is an important thing to do and, and doesn't take a lot of time. You know, I mean, you, yeah. you could do that during dinner, right after dinner. I mean, it, mm -hmm. we're not saying a long time, but 
to avoid these unmet expectations. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. And help you add Um, value. It will really help you add value to your relationship. I mean, that's, you know, I don't, I I call the surface level relationships like, you know, how's the weather? Oh, how you doing? How you (laughs) been? You know, nothing really fruitful comes from it, but you really want to deepen those relationships and, you know, that will help you add value, not only to yourself, but to your partner as well. Yeah. Yeah, and if you catch yourself in a relationship only doing small talk, definitely yeah. look at this website. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> because there are some of us, and I'm including me, who just can't stand small talk. So yeah. Yeah. if that's yeah. the relationship, this is going to be a very difficult relationship. <laughs> yeah. Well, mm-hmm. thank you so much for your time, Chris. And, and I want to thank everybody out there for listening. And we love you. And happy Valentine's Month, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Let, let's celebrate a month of love um, yeah. and definitely appreciate all of you. And, you know, if you like this content, please like it, share it with your friends, put comments, um, anything you want to hear us talk about, um, please get in touch and let us know. But yes, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.